An intense week of NAFTA talks has ended with no deal for Canada. Despite missing Trump's deadline, though, the president has notified Congress of his intent to sign a trade agreement with Mexico and Canada if it is willing. The U.S. Trade Representative says talks with Canada were, quote, constructive and progress was made, but clearly more needs to be done. Minister Freeland will meet again with U.S. Trade Representative Robert Lighthizer next Wednesday. Joining me now from the CBC's breaking news desk in Toronto is Steve Niles. Hey, Steve, thanks for being with us. My pleasure. So we heard the minister talk this evening just, just a few minutes ago. What stood out for you? What did you take away from what she said? Vashi, it's really hard to tell at this point who's the ball, which... Let me start that one again. It's hard to tell who has the ball in their side of the court. That's the metaphor that I'm trying to get. Because as you mentioned, the United States Trade Representative saying they'll sign a trade deal with Canada if Canada is willing to do it. Meanwhile, uh, we heard from Minister Freeland saying that talks were ongoing and that she's very encouraged. So just a quick rundown of what we heard in this process or in this press conference, excuse me. She said that everything is within reach, but we are not there yet. Uh, that a win-win-win for everybody is the goal at this point. She said that she works uh, in Canadian dollars. She referred to a few times and that she's, she said she's trying to get a beneficial deal for Canada and only will get a deal if it does benefit Canada. And an interesting thing as well, she thanked uh, U.S. Trade Representative Robert Lighthizer in this case for negotiating in good faith. And interesting to hear that uh, based on the comments that we heard from Donald Trump earlier today saying that these comments that uh, he was not willing to deal with Canada no matter what was happening. Uh, he said, I don't want, she said that she, I don't want to negotiate in public uh, and that she agreed with Bob Lighthizer on that front that they didn't want to do that. She was asked about supply management, if that's on the table. Uh, she said, again, not negotiating in public. So that's a question many people are left wondering at this point. Uh, interesting answer came from a, a question came from a excellent journalist about uh, comments that Mr. Christopher Freeland had made earlier in the week about how the U.S.-Mexican deal that was announced on Monday, why that gave her optimism. She said that a lot of work had to been done around the auto sector, and she was pleased to see that, that Mexico had come to the table and that I think she didn't use the word consent sessions, but to preface or to uh, make it a little briefer, she had mentioned that Mexico had made uh, concessions uh, on rules of origin. Uh, and one more interesting thing, I think Vashi will appreciate this as well. Uh, while she was giving the same answer over and over again, because uh, she didn't want to uh, give away too much detail, she acknowledged that she used to be a reporter and how she found it difficult and apologized almost for having to give the same answer. Yeah, it's a frustrating feeling as a reporter to hear yeah. that answer over and over. I want to I wanna pick up on one thing you mentioned, and, and I thought that was basically the only new thing that came out of today, and that was the line of questioning around the report from the Toronto Star about those off-the-record remarks from the president, basically, as you said, saying that, uh, you know, he, he would not give anything away to Canada. And and she was asked pretty directly, you know, did you bring up those remarks in the negotiations? Did that lead to, you know, the, the, the fact that there was no deal reached today? Uh, tell me a bit about, about her response to that and why that might be significant. Yeah, she she again. She wanted. She made a particular moment. Uh, she took a moment to thank Bob Lighthizer and his team for negotiating in good faith. And she says, "I've been negotiating with him for the better part of a year now, and I wanted to thank him for this." The tone of today, if you've been paying attention from this morning to midday to now, it's changed probably uh, a few times. I was looking at what the Canadian dollar was doing uh, as well, and it was changing along with the tone. These sort of violent up and down moves. Whereas this morning there was a lot of optimism that it deal would happen. Uh, then the Toronto Star had its report that Trump said he was not willing to deal with Canada. Uh, Minister Freeland today, she's trying to put out that fire, I suppose, by saying that she's negotiating with Lighthizer, doesn't want to negotiate in public, and thanked him for negotiating in good faith for the better part of a year. And they'll be back at the table on Wednesday. Thanks so much, Steve. Really appreciate it. The CBC's Steve Niles in Toronto. To get some more analysis, we're heading over to Washington, where the director of the Wilson Institute, Laura Dawson, is standing by. Hi, Laura. Thanks so much for being with us. Nice to see you again. Nice to see you too, Bashi. Okay, what's your initial reaction to the events of the day? Um, I, my initial reaction to the events of the day are that the president saying something in a tweet that is at odds with something that his his officials are are doing or saying is not news. This does happen all the time on all sorts of issues. So I think it's a real mistake to uh, link uh, the president's tweet with the decoupling or the suspension of the talks today. I think a, a much longer game is playing out. Uh, I was I was on your show on Monday and. 
I said, you know, it's great that they're coming back to the table, but I think there's too much ground to cover in four or five days. I don't think they can get everything they need to get done, and they didn't. But they did end on a very productive note. I mean, I saw as well Minister Freeland's uh, conciliatory, productive, congratulatory to the other side. Um, I think that's a good note to be uh, stopping on today. And they still have lots of room to come back and finish off all of the sectors that they really do need to finish off. Let me ask you about that room, because we've got the president basically notifying Congress that he wants to sign this trade deal if, with Mexico and if Canada, uh, Canada, if they're willing. Um, it, that sort of sets a clock in motion, I understand. Uh, the full text has to, has to be presented by September 30th. What kind of limits, or, if any, does that place on the negotiations that pick up on Wednesday? Well, I think it provides a necessary momentum because if you've got all the time in the world, you will take all the time in the world. And the Canadian economy in particular has been suffering from this kind of instability during the negotiations. So I think it's good that they have a target to work from. Uh, and I can see that some of the issues I was concerned that just weren't getting any airplay at all before, like intellectual property, uh, which includes pharmaceuticals and broadcasting and everything else, plus a good labor and environmental side agreement. You know, where's that? I, I think we're now seeing some movement on that. Some of that was was galvanized by the talks with the, with Mexico, and some of it's just by being at the table, talking every day, uh, and going through these difficult issues. And it's not till they get through those difficult issues that we know whether Canada will make any concessions on the you know coin toss issues, on dairy, on Chapter 19, on uh, uh, cross border low value shipments, etc. On those issues, how, I mean, I know it's it's so hard right now because a lot of it is speculation, obviously, but um, how, how, what does today, the, the sort of way that this played out over the last week and today especially, tell us about the distance between the two countries on some of those issues that you just mentioned? I, I think the distance is really narrowing. I mean, some of it is there are going to be a fundamental disagreements over certain things. Uh, there's things that Canada wants to protect, Canada wants to defend dairy, stuff that the U.S. wants to defend as well. But a lot of the issues also are simply just very complex. Remember, the minister talked about rules of origin and autos. You just can't solve those with an overnighter. They're really about, you know, hundreds, thousands of pages of, of legal agreements and looking at how supply chains have changed since 1994. So they just have to get through that stuff. Um, and so I'm encouraged that they're now uh, focusing and and uh, hopefully we'll get a deal on, on those important things. Does this congressional timeline that's been set out now fairly formally uh, impact in any way from your perspective Canada's leverage, ability to, to sort of, or the amount of leverage we have? Um... Again, it focuses people, it brings people back to the table. Um, I don't see that it particularly ties Canada's hands. I mean, a lot can get done in, in 30 days. I think people do legitimately want to see progress. Interestingly, when I look at the letter that was submitted to Congress today, I see a lot of TPP language in there. I see references to things like state-owned enterprises and digital modernization, things that the U.S. has wanted to bring back to the table since it walked away from the TPP. So that as well is helpful because Canada, U.S. and Mexico have already agreed in a lot of those areas. So in a sense, they're sort of pre uh, pre-canned consensus in, in a lot of things, and that could be helpful to getting a deal done. Okay, I'll leave it there. Thanks a lot, Ms. Dawson. Really appreciate your insight. You're welcome. We're going to turn over to the Canadian Embassy in, in Washington as well, where Katie Simpson has, of course, been following all of this all week. Katie, it's nice to see you again. <laughs> Thanks for joining us. This was a wild day in a wild week. It was. There are certainly a lot of ups and downs to follow today, and it sort of started on a bit of a sour note. Uh, the Canadian delegation had to confront the Americans about these comments that Donald Trump made off the record to Bloomberg. Yeah, the story goes, somehow the Toronto Star obtained comments that Donald Trump had made off the record to Bloomberg News, where basically Donald Trump said he is not going to compromise, and any time that Canada puts up any sort of a fuss, he holds up a picture of of a car that's produced in Oshawa, Ontario, and that if he said this publicly, it would be so insulting that Canada could not actually agree to a deal. Uh, so what sources have confirmed to us is, yes, the Canadians did confront the Americans about this behind closed doors this morning, although three sources tell me that talks remain professional. One very senior source said those comments certainly didn't help. 
later in the day, Donald Trump confirmed he made those comments in a tweet. So that was sort of the momentum going into this. And it was certainly the all of the optimism as the day started, uh, started to evaporate. However, uh, things seem to be on a more positive tone to finish. Uh, although all sides had hoped to have a NAFTA agreement by today, or at least some sort of signing off on something in principle, they didn't quite get there yet. But Talks are going to continue on Wednesday, and Canada's, the, Canada is going to be included in that letter to Congress saying that Canada can be included if it intends. Uh, Christopher Freeland was asked today about whether Donald Trump's comments accurately portray how the Americans are at the negotiating table, and she says that's not the case. Our starting point uh, was a place where Canada and the U.S. were quite far apart in their proposals. Uh, but what we found as the negotiation went on is Canada and the United States shared a concern for our workers in the car sector who are high wage workers who have felt that they can be disadvantaged by trade agreements. And one of the things that I think we are accomplishing in this agreement is a better deal for worker, Canadian and U.S. workers in the auto sector. In that news conference, Christian Freeland also said that Ambassador Lighthizer, the American leading the American trade team, uh, has uh, come forward with goodwill and good intentions as this negotiation carries out, despite the comments made by Donald Trump off the record to Bloomberg that ended up published in the Toronto Star. Okay, thank you so much, Katie. Really appreciate your reporting all week. Hope you and your crew get a little rest tonight. <laughs> CBC's Katie Simpson in Washington. Thanks.